We're one week into the new normal, the Safety Act. It's now a week into the biggest element of that act. Illinois is the first state to eliminate cash bail, meaning the majority of those charged with crimes will be released from custody before going to trial without needing to post a dime, nothing for bail. A uh, jury is, of course, out on whether it's right or wrong, and there's still some work to be done, many would say. Joining me now is DuPage County State's Attorney Robert Berlin. He's served in that top role since 2010. Mr. State's Attorney, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Good morning, Brad. So let's step back. I, I don't think people really grasp completely what no cash bail means. Can, can you give me a 20-second synopsis of it. Sure. So for most criminal offenses, judges have three options now. They can release someone, they can release someone with conditions, or if the state attorney files a motion to detain, in many cases, judges have the ability to detain someone if they find that they're a threat to a person, persons, or the community, and that there's no other uh, uh, circumstances or uh, that can protect the public other than detention. That threshold, though, is much higher now, correct? It is higher, um, but again, judges still have that ability to detain under the amended act, which uh, was passed in December of 2022. Yeah, so they've amended the statute. It is more to your liking, as we've discussed uh, before. So, so what are, I want to know the non-detainable charges. If you commit X crime, you will not be jailed until you're tried or convicted. Like, what are some of the higher level non-detainables, if you will? Uh, so, unlawful restraint, uh, which is a class four felony, uh, is non-detainable. Uh, your class four thefts or your class four identity theft, uh, under a certain amount are non-detainable. Um, and there are still some offenses that are only detainable if you are a willful risk of flight, not under the dangerousness standard, uh, burglary being one of them. Not residential burglary, because that is detainable under a dangerousness standard, but the offense of burglary is only detainable if someone is a willful flight risk or because of their criminal history it becomes a non-probationable offense. Interesting. So, I mean, we obviously have a burglary crisis in Chicago right now. Uh, and you have an interesting case from just yesterday. Chicago man on parole for aggravated battery out of Cook County. Uh, aggravated battery, meaning he hurt someone. He already on parole for that. He broke into a high-end boutique in Hinsdale, stole nearly $70,000 worth of stuff. And he's out, released pending trial. Again, already on parole. Stole 70 grand in goodies and now out uh, under the Safety Act. Is this right? Well, I mean, look, we asked for detention on the case. Uh, the judge disagreed with us. Um, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always happened. It is an adversarial system. Um, the impression that we got was the judge kind of felt uh, that his hands were tied in that particular case. Uh, so you're going to have cases like that. We always have. Uh, but I will say this. We've had, uh, so far this week, we filed petitions in 28 cases uh, to detain defendants. And in 12 of those, our petitions were granted uh, and those defendants were detained. Uh, and I think five or six of them were domestic battery misdemeanors. Jeez. Previously... Uh, those people would have been given some type of a cash bond. Mm -hmm. So you're saying in 16 cases where you, the prosecutor, the top lawman, uh, decision maker in DuPage County, in 16 of the 28 cases, you said this person needs to be behind bars on cash bail. Uh, that was rejected. Um, that's interesting. So, so in the, the old days, if you're out on bond and you no show your court date, you could be charged with a felony for bail jumping. And nowadays, I'm wondering if you're out and you no show your court date and you obviously didn't have to pay bail, like what, what's the penalty? What incentivizes 
people to show up to their criminal proceedings uh, if there's no no cash on the line. So you're correct. Uh, prior to the new law, uh, if you were out on bond and you failed to show up and then didn't show up 30 days later, uh, we could take the case to the grand jury and indict someone for one class lower felony what they were out on bond for. It would be a separate offense, violation of bail bond. That has now been removed. Judges do have the ability to sanction someone, which can include up to 30 days in jail, uh, or uh, they can revisit the conditions of their bail, uh, or they can give them some type of reprimand. However, in the Safety Act, uh, th there's a provision in there that says nothing in the law uh, abridges a judge's contempt powers. And judges still can hold somebody in indirect criminal contempt and that is something uh, we will be filing. We will be filing petitions for defendants who fail to appear in court. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm not talking about defendants who miss the bus or can't get to court because there's a snowstorm. Right. We're talking about defendants who just don't show up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you initially disagreed with the first iteration of the Safety Act. You were part of the proposals that improved per you and, and many others and state's attorney's offices throughout the state that improved the Safety Act. Uh, no one probably prepared more than DuPage County for this thing, 20 million in infrastructure, et cetera, new courtrooms, yada, yada. Um, if you have a list of improvements of the Safety Act that need to be made legislatively, what's number one after week one? I would say the most important thing is judges should have discretion in every case. Okay. similar to what New Jersey has. And that is something really that I've been advocating since uh, this was first being discussed, the elimination of cash bail. Uh, every case is different, and it's hard to categorize them and say, well, these cases are detainable and these aren't, regardless of the facts and the circumstances. Yeah. And that's something really I've been pushing for, uh, as I said, from the beginning. Yeah, uh, New Jersey has a very similar law, but in the end, uh, the judge can, can supersede it and say, no, 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 this one rises to a certain level. We got to hold this person. Uh, Robert Berlin, state's attorney, uh, DuPage County, uh, reelected, 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 reelected again. Uh, we know you're always a voice for victims there. We appreciate your time. Thank you for talking to us, and let's check in in a couple weeks. Thank you, Mr. Berlin. Sounds good. Thank you, Brad. Well, millions of babies are born prematurely every year. That translates to about one in 10 newborns. And that need for extra care support is in the neonatal intensive care unit, or NICU. Our friend Lauren Victory spoke with a